So today's Britain Poland video takes you to Kashalin. Now, this is a lesser known city, I would say, on the uh, like uh, northern bank of Poland. It's um, not too far from Gdansk, very, very close to Kowobzeg, which is maybe a little better known. And actually, this place is quite special, I would say. It's a medieval city and you have, well, they call it a mountain, but I call it more a set of hills, uh, but with a helm nearby. And in addition, you have a connection to the sea. You go up north, uh, you have uh, Mielmo. So you have a wonderful, wonderful place to visit. It's a bit of a quieter city, I have to say that. But if you're touring Poland, definitely one for the bucket list. So please enjoy. Dzień dobry. Welcome to a Brit in Poland. This channel has a number of missions. The main one to create a video for every place on this list. Though I could use your help. The help could be in a number of forms. You could like my video, you could subscribe to my channel, you could follow me on Facebook or Instagram, or you could donate to my Patronite account. Thank you very much for your time. I hope you enjoy the video. Kashalin is located in northwestern Poland as part of the Western Pomeranian Vavoidship. Uh, the journey I took there uh, was from Gdansk. It was about two and a half, three hours by train. So not too bad. And in terms of the history to begin with, before I uh, go into um, details about the modern city. Now, approximately, I think 11,000 BC, uh, we have evidence of uh, nomadic tribes of reindeer hunters being active in the area. We have traces of Mesolithic culture um, between 6,000 and 4,000 BC, uh, with various flint tools being discovered. But let's say the first significant history starts between the kind of 8th and 10th century AD. And here, uh, pagan cults basically erected a temple on the neighboring mountain, we'll call it, uh, Helm Gora. And so this was quite a uh, pilgrimage site and would remain so to this day. And 1107, uh, the settlement was captured by Duke Bolesław III Rymouth. And it became part of the Duchy of Pomerania, which was a vassal state of Poland, in the 12th century. This territory would be handed over to Denmark in 1185 and the Holy Roman Empire in 1227. In 1266, it was granted the Lübeck Law and German settlers were basically encouraged to live there as it was now a free city and it needed a bit of a population. It incorporated the village of Yamno uh, up in the north in 1331 and this was pretty important because it granted it access to the sea. And as a result, in 1386, it actually joined the Hanseatic League. There were various conflicts in the 15th century. Uh, they were fighting with Kowobzeg and with uh, Bogoslav X. And at this point, there was a pretty sizable German population in the city. And this actually led to the persecution of the Slavic inhabitants, uh, to so much so that trade was banned for these people. In 1637, uh, during the Thirty Years' War with Sweden, it was occupied by Swedish troops and yeah, pretty much burned to the ground. And it became part of Prussia after the treaties of Westphalia and Stettin, or Szczecin, as uh, we know it now. Uh, after the Swedes left, of course, in 1701. In 718, it was damaged horrifically by fire, with two-thirds of the city being completely destroyed. 
and I believe only the church and some of the houses survived so there was a let's say a big rebuilding project after that and then in 1807 it was occupied by French troops during the Napoleonic Wars and things improved uh, in the 19th century, it became the administrative and communication centre of central Pomerania and had a bit of a, an industry growing with paper manufacturing, brewing, dairy farming, agricultural machinery and later on an aircraft factory uh, during World War I. In 1871, it actually became part of the German Empire and would remain so until long after the wars. Uh, so in 1933, uh, Gestapo station was established. And during the Second World War, the city was used as a training center for German rocket troops and became the place of uh, a prison and forced labor camps for prisoners of war. And after the Warsaw Uprising, Many women and children were taken from Warsaw and put into the city. In 1945, it was captured by the Red Army, basically the Soviets, and once again was part of Poland after the Potsdam Agreement. And at this point, it was resettled by Poles and Kashubians, Kashubians being a kind of tribe from the north, they may as well call themselves Polish now, though some may disagree. And any of the uh, remaining Germans in the city were basically displaced and sent back to Germany. Between 1975 and 1998, the capital, it was made the capital of the Kashalin Voivodeship, though this uh, dissolved, and in 1999 it just became part of the West Pomeranian Voivodeship. So, let's move on to the city. So, now that we've done the history, it's time to visit what you really want to see. So, let's start at the train station. Natural place to start most journeys. You're greeted by a lovely mural uh, on the way across, well, down the underpass. Now, the first place I always try to go to uh, when I visit any new city, and I severely recommend this for anyone, is the Information Centre. You would be surprised how much information you can get. I love to get the maps, and the maps really tell me what to see. Now, this city may seem a little unassuming at first, like, oh, it's just another Polish city, but you have to do a bit of digging here and you really have to go like down the back streets to uncover all kinds of historical architecture ranging from the Middle Ages through to the modern day, including a lot of Gothic and Neo-Gothic areas. So the main square contains the town hall built in 1960. And it's actually the sixth town hall in the city's history with all the previous ones having burnt down uh, the last one in 1945 during the Soviet conquest. And you have this lovely fountain, which everyone seems to run through during the hot summer days. And it was pretty hot when I went there in June. Right in the centre, you have the big cathedral. And this actually dates back to about 1300. So it's pretty old. Um, inside, you will find a Baroque organ from 1899 and it also contains a 13th century baptismal font and any city in Poland is not a city really without a big cathedral so this one certainly impresses and it's always nice when you can actually go inside because the number of times I've tried to go into some of these places and they've been shut or there's been some mass going on it's like right don't want to disturb but a must-see of this part. Next, you have the Pomeranian Dukes Park. And the oldest part actually only goes back to 1817. But it, one of the things, it contains this old sycamore tree called the Witch's Tree, 
and you'll also find a little island for swans in the kind of middle of a sort of lake. Um, but what I really love, love about this park is it stretches quite away and it, it actually it's, though we call it the Pomeranian Dukes Park, there are several parks that are kind of connected like the Amphitheatre Park as well. Um, it has this lovely fountain which again at night uh, is lit up in all kinds of pretty colours. Um, though I have to be honest you probably more enjoy this in winter because in the summer you don't have much reason to stay out too late uh, in Kishalin. <laughs> it is a bit of a sleepy town. Uh, here you have the, the new Philharmonic Centre, so this replaced the Centre of Culture, which was a property of the Travelling Theatre, apparently, which takes me back to my theatrical days. And, of course, you have so many monuments. Um, I will throw a load of more monuments at the end of this video, just to really show how many there are. And I love these little signs, you know, to uh, neighbouring cities. I say neighbouring, uh, some of them several hundreds, if not thousands of kilometres away. Um, next, you have the amphitheatre. And uh, this is actually from 1973, with the, the roof based on a design by Jan Filipkowski uh, from the uh, technical school. Before, it was um, an area for a shooting park, a restaurant, and a bowling alley until 1820. And next, we hit the public library. Now, this contains the biggest collection of books in Middle Pomerania. It's quite a feat, including a lot of science-y type stuff and regional classics. Um, the monument here is from 1976 and it's devoted to the Association of Poles living abroad um, with their motherland, which was commissioned by the Worldwide Festival of Polonian Choirs. Uh, here was a lovely trail of bottle caps. Sadly, it didn't lead me to free beer. This is the Miller's Palace, so this is from 1890, but it's attached to the old mill which uh, goes back to 1266. And this is basically the big museum that you have to visit and I was showing lots of clips of. And here you have, I think, 13th century uh, medieval walls. And these are kind of dotted around the city. You can see this particular one, you actually have millstones um, in there, which I think is a significant thing. Um, but yeah. Of course, like this was a well-fortified city, and here you have the uh, the fire brigade building dating from 1928, and it still functions. The next building is has been many things. It was a Sistine convent. It was a castle, uh, which was burnt down in 1780. And next to it, you have another old church from the 13th century. Some really old buildings here. Uh, now, this church was uh, from the Cistercian Convent originally, reconstructed in 1602, renovated in 1818, and in 1953 it was transformed to the Orthodox Church, which it is now. Again, plenty of churches. Next you have the Executioner's House, which is a 15th century Gothic style. Actually, the last execution in Cashallan took place in 1893, and there were various execution spots such as Hangman's Hill and the Marketplace. And just a little break to show you some more of the murals. One thing I love about Polish cities is normally you will find a decent amount of murals dotted around. And I always think they add a nice bit of colour to a city. Certainly, it, it can be fun to hunt these things in some places. Some places have so many, it's uh, unbelievable. Next you have the uh, former branch of the National Bank of Poland, uh, built in 1936. And interestingly, in 1945, it was the Soviet headquarters. Uh, the Wedding Palace is a 16th century tenement house. And yeah, it's been used as a wedding house since 1982. St. Gertrude's Chapel, built in 1383, 
was originally a hospital chapel and it was converted to ammunition storage in 1735 and then used as a theatre stage and is now doing religious functions again. Uh, the theatre uh, was originally a 1906 Evangelical Augsburg Parish building. It was a transit camp for refugees, an infectious disease hospital, and now a theatre. The Dubois School, built in 1910, originally intended to host the Duchess of Bismarck. 1944 was a field hospital. It's been a school since 1947. Now we have a whole series of neo-Gothic buildings. Uh, this polyclinic was built in 1895 as a municipal hospital, used for mun municipal house stuff, and is now the healthcare unit. And we have a 14th century tenement house, uh, basically res residential, but was restored in 1958. Uh, the State Archives was a, originally a garrison hospital from the 1880s. The uh, post office is a post office, and it always has been, from 1884. And this was the home of the Telegraph Construction Office. And of course they used horses back in the day for the postal service. And next we have the Regency Building. I think this is the Regency Building. Um, from 1890 as a seat of the Prussian authorities. And a kind of Art Nouveau design, and it's now apparently a provincial police station. Now this is the oldest educational facility in Kishalin, and is actually listed as a historical monument, so worth the look. And we go to a few places to eat. So this place was recommended uh, by my hotel. It was a little bit pricey, I have to admit, but the food was very nice, very filling. I, yeah, I certainly felt stuffed after that, but I needed a good meal after the day's long walk. Uh, this Pivnica pod Grifami, um, I basically just found on Google Maps. Uh, had a really nice cocktail in here. And it has like musical instruments dotted around everywhere. And like, they have musical performances, they do food. Um, I was told it was very quiet the, the night I went in because the uh, football had been playing the day before. And it was just a nice little find, actually. So I, I completely recommend this place. Uh, they made a really nice cocktail, I have to say. And plus, good ambience. Of course, you have to go to the Kishalin Brewery. Even if you don't like a drink, it is worth popping in there. This was actually built in 1873, though it's only really been a restaurant or bar since the 1990s. Uh, they brew their own beer, which I believe is called Koval. Sadly, I don't think it's like national distribution yet, but it was very tasty. The staff were very friendly. Um, there was this one chap, uh, seeing that I was a tourist, and I'm guessing not having seen many English tourists, he took me to all the back rooms to show me um, the, the full scale of the place. And so I was very pleasantly surprised um, to get this additional light show, to see these historical uh, photos, um, which I think, judging by the names on some of the streets, uh, this is kind of 1930s uh, kind of area. I love Adolf Hitler Street. Um, <laughs> But yeah, I have to admit, I, I spent a couple of nights here. Closed at about 11, which was sad, but still, it was really nice. So, Kishalin, it's a sleepy place, but it's a beautiful place. Um, hence the name of the video. It really is lovely. Uh, so lovely that actually there has to be a part two. Um, because so far... I've just talked about the city and I haven't talked about what you can do outside of the city. So please stay tuned for that second part. And actually, because I managed to forget, there is one last building uh, that I want to show you right at the end of this video, um, which is the St. Joseph's Church. Now, this is just coming up in a second and this was built in 1869. And yeah, okay, we're, I've jumped the gun a little bit, but 
<coughs> seriously Kishalin, wonderful place hope you like the video if you did give it a like if you want to see more please subscribe those are the